Welcome back. Today's video is going to be a short video on how you can upgrade your M2 drive from one M2 drive to another M2 drive with only one slot. So the idea behind this short video is quite simply, I want to upgrade my Intel 600p, which is only 128 gigabytes, and with Windows updates and other things that are being pushed out now, um, it's getting a bit full and I'm struggling to clear space on it, especially with big apps like Adobe Premiere and, and a few other games which you can't move from the Windows Store, which is really annoying. So the reason for wanting to upgrade the drive and to show you guys how to do that if you've only got one M.2 slot on your motherboard like I have, because it's an older motherboard, we're going to show you one way, there are many ways, this is going to be one way that you can upgrade yours. I'm going to upgrade mine to a Western Digital Black 250 gig drive from a 128 gig Intel 600p. And to do that, I have bought something from Amazon, and this is called a Easy DIY Dash Fab. So it must be fabulous. This one's a little bit extra special. So this is a M.2 PCIe adapter. So I'll quickly go through what you get in the box. You get the PCIe card. This is a times four PCIe card. One is for M.2 SATA, and one is M.2 for NVMe drives only. That one will use the times four PCIe bus that this connects to. The other one has a SATA extension cable, which will connect onto here, and then into a SATA port on your motherboard. So you can run both together, but not both through the PCIe port. So you get the extension cable, obviously the PCIe card itself. You also get a nice top cover to go on top of the SSDs as kind of a heatsink. And you get some thermal pads and screws to screw the heatsink onto. Also, it comes with these two cables and these are for RGB sync to your motherboard. And yes, that's right, it is fully addressable and it has RGB all the way around it and I'll show you that in a bit. So let's get on with it and get this thing fitted in and get the drive transferring over. Okay, so let's get the M.2 drive fitted to the PCIe card and install it in the PC. So grab your M.2 PCIe adapter, grab your M.2 drive. Now I am totally wearing anti-static wrist bracelets by the way. Pop that in the M.2 NVMe socket there. And of course, get the screws ready before you start. So as you can see, I've already got a M.2 SATA drive installed already. Now I'm going to be probably be using that as a cache drive. Um, but this is going to be my main boot drive, but I need to copy the current drive over to this one and then replace that back into the system. So firstly, we need to screw that on. Now these screws here are extremely tiny, so you do need to be very, very careful and it looks like I've got the wrong screwdriver. Grab yourself the screw, the tiny, tiny screw and an appropriate screwdriver. And very carefully mount that onto the PCA card itself. There we go, screw that on, not too tight, just tight enough to hold it in place, that's all you need. And there we go, now we can put the thermal paste on the top. So, I'm going to leave this on, I'm going to put this on for show, just to show you guys how it goes on. Obviously I would recommend that if you're going to put this on, and you're going to put the heat pads on, I would remove the stickers, because otherwise the heat pads aren't really going to do much anyways. You might want to put those somewhere safe if you need to say send it back for whatever reason. So we're going to pop that on there. Probably easier to do this the other way around. So we're going to flip that over, line up the screw holes there and screw this in. Again, don't over tighten the screws, just do them tight enough. That's all it needs. Like that. So there we have it. That is what the finished article looks like. Let's hold it that way around. And that needs to go in the computer. So that's the next step.
Okay, so we've got the M.2 PCIe adapter installed with the NVMe drive and the SATA drive, although that's not connected. We're only worried about the NVMe drive. So we're going to see if it's picked up by the system before we do anything else, because that's the most important thing. It needs to be there, doesn't it, really? So we're going to go to Device Manager, drag that over, go to Disk Drives, and yep, yeah, there it is. It's that one there. So that's our NVMe driver, and you can verify that by going to events and if you see here if it shows nvme obviously the name of the drive the actual name of the drive not the name of the commercial not the commercial name in the drive we're good to go so now we need to load up our software now the software of choice today we're going to be using mini tool partition wizard for this it is free and it should do the job just fine no, why has that gone back? So we always get problems. So why can't we see the screen? It's highly annoying. So I'm having some issues at the minute. And that can't screen capture mini tool. Partition wizard, for some reason the screen goes black. I think it's an OBS issue. So I'm gonna figure that out and come right back. Okay, so we've managed to get the screen capture software working so I can show you guys what it is I'm doing. Let's just double check that all the drives are showing in Minitool Partition Wizard, which I'm pretty sure they are. I've never had an issue with it yet. This is a free bit of software and I'll put a link down in the description down below where you can download this and do this yourself. So what we're going to do is we're going to clone our boot drive to the Western Digital 250 gig that I've just put in there, which is this drive here. And as you can see there, it's unallocated, so it's ready to be used. So what we do, we click on migrate OS to SSD or HD it will take us through a few steps I would like to replace the system disk with another hard disk so that is the option that we're going to go for on this occasion click next on that so select the destination drive and it's already selected drive 2 as it's unallocated it kind of figures that that's the drive you're going to upgrade to you're not going to overwrite one that already exists so it's already selected the Western Digital 250 gig there as we can see that is the one. Double check that is the drive. Whatever drive you're going to use, make sure that you know which drive you're putting it on. Okay, so click next on that. We could choose fit partitions to the entire disk, but that's going to increase the size of all the partitions, and we don't want to do that. We only want to increase the size of drive C, the main one. We don't care about the others, they can stay the size they are. So to do that, copy partitions without resize, and then you can manually configure those yourself. So the best way to customize the partitions yourself is we want that to be allocated to the main 117.7 gig there for my C drive. We want to increase that one. I don't want to increase any of the others. So to do that we need to start at the right hand side of the drive and basically we're going to kind of resize them and shuffle them around a little bit to move the unallocated space to the area that I want it to be in. So what we're going to do, we're going to drag that all the way over and then we're going to select the front of that partition and make it roughly about the same size. So it was about 800 megabytes or so. I don't know whether it's going to let me do that. We want to try and use as much space as we possibly can. So about a gig. So that has now moved the unallocated space to the area that I want it at. So I'm now going to increase the space on that to the maximum, which is going to give me 231 gigs on my C drive, which is perfect. That's what we want. The others can remain as they are. We don't need to touch those at all. So we're going to click next on that. So it's going to give you a little warning about the BIOS um, in that you need to configure your boot drive once that's done. But we're not going to worry about that too much because we are actually going to be replacing the onboard NVMe drive anyway. So it shouldn't know any different. Click finish. That hasn't set anything in motion. That's kind of a placeholder. So you set all the things that you want to do. You can do multiple tasks as well. So if we wanted to format another drive or clone another drive, we could do that. And then basically we click apply in the top left corner up there and it will then run through all those tasks 
in order. Great. A quick overview before we do click the apply button. As you can see there, the partitions here are the same size. The one we're worried about, which was this one here, which is now 231. 3 gigs instead of 117 so it's giving me a little bit more space on that and the end partition there not entirely sure what that one is that's increased a little bit but we're not too worried about that that shouldn't make any difference so we're going to click apply and let it do its thing this is going to take a little while so go make a coffee and we'll be right back So one other thing before we let this do its own thing is that because the drive is in use, it can't copy some of the system files. So what it's going to do now, it's going to reboot the system and it's going to clone that over to the new NVMe drive before it boots into Windows. So let's do that and we'll be right back. So that's the drive swapped over and the new Western Digital NVMe drive replaced where the Intel 600P was on the motherboard. So let's fire it up and make sure it boots. It's not looking good. Hallelujah! So there we go, that is booting off the Western Digital 250 gig NVMe that we've just replaced and we cloned two and there it is perfect and if you want to make doubly sure that it is booting off the drive obviously we've unplugged the other drive so I know that it's booting off of that drive that we've cloned to but if you want to double check and you've still got the original drive in your system for whatever reason then go back to device manager and check on your disk drives Again, go to the new drive that you put in. In our case, it's the Western Digital 256 gig. Go to volumes, click on populate, and it will tell you what drives are on that drive, what partitions are on that drive. So in my case, I was correct, and it is the C drive and the recovery drive and the invisible drive. So that wraps up another video. I hope this video was useful to you in upgrading your NVMe drive if you've only got one slot on your motherboard like I have. It's a very easy thing to do. You don't need to worry about it. Use the tools described in this video. I like Minitool, it's free. It works as you saw. So that's the one I'm recommending for this. Don't forget to like, subscribe and check out our other videos down here and we'll see you in the next one. So that wraps up another video. I hope this look into how you can upgrade your NVMe and there, 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 there. No, no. Oh my God. No, that's stupid, stupid. So that wraps up another video. Shut up. <laughs>